This is a HeadGum Podcast. Greetings, Nadpoles. It is I, the Breakfast Wizard, here to talk to you about Magic Spoon, the sacred artifact I use to cast my serial mancy spells. After years of... Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, it turns out this is an ad for Magic Spoon the Serial, not by Spellcasting Focus. As such, I'm going to let Caldwell take over. Ta-ta! Hey gang, Caldwell here. Sorry about that. Real quick, here is what you need to know. Birthday Cake Flavor is back. That's right, this limited edition cereal was so popular that Magic Spoon brought it back, and now you can get it for yourself. For a limited time, Magic Spoon is offering a free box of birthday cake cereal with every purchase, including subscriptions. This cereal is normally $10, so this gift with purchase is a great deal. To take advantage of this offer, head to magicspoon.com slash pawpawbday to grab a custom bundle of cereal and get a free box of birthday cake and try the magic for yourself. Remember, this exclusive offer is only available to NADPOD listeners. So go to magicspoon.com slash pawpawbday to add a free box of birthday cake to any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Okay, the Breakfast Wizard is still loose in my house somewhere, so I have to go. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Welcome to the campaign after the campaign. This is not another D&D podcast. Welcome back to Bahumia, everyone. Bahumia. 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 I'm your dungeon master. <laughs> That's a cute one. I'm into it. <laughs> Vote that now. yes for more. Okay. <laughs> I am that your dungeon more. master, Brian Murphy, joined by Jake Hurwitz. Hard one, surefoot. Emily Axford. Moonshine, Sab, and Maribel's personal hell. Oh. That's a threat. And That's Caldwell Tanner. Very much don't call the fit. <laughs> All right, drop it. A little right. too high pitch for today, guys. This oh, yeah. is a this is an intense episode Trying coming to out. We got a big adventure to I go. Know. I want to talk about Aquanauts and Helium, but I'm not going to go there. All right, guys, let's do a recap. Last Mm. week, you guys started off your adventure by going to sleep in the cave where you found the (laughs) Infernal Book. We're so smart. (laughs) You started off. You are rude for phrasing your little recap that way. Started off your adventure by going to sleep. (laughs) Oh my god. <laughs> but just before bed, Hard One pulled out Glad's head as a goof, <laughs> causing a fist fight with Luna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she popped me in the nose. <laughs> you deserved it. Uh, Luna went out for a little walk to calm down, then returned and slept outside the cave. Don't Dor- forget that hard one made Collad's severed head talk to her. <laughs> yeah, you did not do a good job <laughs> in de-escalating. I was doing a bit, You man. did a full punch in Judy. <laughs> Honestly, I don't need any friends. I got a crow now. <laughs> I got a new crow. Go on. During the night, Moonshine's crick rot started to get to her, and she started having dark thoughts about her party mates. Eventually, she was transported to a black void where she stood face to face with Maribel. <sighs> Maribel was able to manipulate Moonshine into flipping in and out of her fungal form and heavily implied that Moonshine was not a crick elf at all, but simply an evolved fungal entity created by Maribel's spores. You guys followed Bev's sense evil to try to locate Maribel's lair, and it brought you to a river which conveniently had a raft next to it. You traveled down the muck-filled, infected river and fought an assortment of monsters before finally arriving at Maribel's lair. You called upon the powers of your elemental titans and received their blessings, but just as you were planning to sneak up to Maribel's hideout, you heard her voice in your head. She called off her moat of mushrooms and carved a path for you, leading directly to her lair. Goddamn panopticon. Cool. And that's where we are now. You guys are approaching these big dome mushrooms. You see, as Balnor sees you guys as these, like, elemental gods, uh, he goes, should I should I go in there? Or what are you thinking here? Uh, you should come in with us, but 
hide most of the time. Yeah, feel free to uh, sometimes just watch the bags because you're so good at that. Watch the bags slash javelin every once in a while? Every once in a while. Hey. I, you know what? Don't javelin unless things are dire because you don't want to draw attention to yourself. <laughs> we might run in and just grab a tuna sandwich from you. Kind of just hide in the halls. Somebody <laughs> needs a potion. Maybe I run out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does anyone have a potion to give him? I have a potion. Oh, you do? Do you yeah. want to give it to Belnor? I'm going to hold it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. All right, Belnor. I can you... always just fish it out. It. Show me where it is. It's right here. I show Balnor uh, way too much of my waist as I pull up oh, my, boy. my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, vicious I need, Yeah, I did not need to show him the abs. I want to, like, minute before we enter, I want a symbiotic entity. Mm. Cool. So, yeah, if you guys want to enter, she's kind of paved the way for you. You see there were all these uh, fungi traps that yeah. were clearly going to kind of explode, and they've mm. all just deflated. Let's go. Let's yeah. not pussyfoot around anymore. I know. Yeah. Cool. So, you guys... Walk towards this big dome. Um, okay, before we get there, I would like to cast a spell on myself. I'm going to cast haste on myself. Ooh. Okay. I know it sounds indecent to spell cast on yourself, but I'm Moonshine Sab and I do what the fuck I want. <laughs> oh, and before we go in, I do want to ignite uh, Hardshine. Okay. Um, I want to run my fingers along it and elicit a green flame to bloom. Green flame bursts from the sword as you guys enter the dome. Moonshine turns into her fungal form. You are this algae, algae form. water <laughs> swampy monster, the swampiest Ooh, fucking mushroom queen you've ever seen. This is like prom seen. goals, right? <laughs> Under Can the you sea. see this? <laughs> you guys enter this giant mushroom cap. It's a big dome. Uh, all along the walls are thousands of tiny holes. If you had trypophobia, oh, no! you'd freak the fuck Merv out. Merv knows this because this I told room. him what trypophobia was the other day by showing him a picture of Crocs with beans in them. <laughs> uh, you guys see Maribel in the middle of the room. She's this devil slash fungal queen. She's got gray skin, black pupils, mushroom hair, and where her legs would be, you see mycelium type roots connecting her to the ground as if she's the center of this entire cursed fungal network. And she suddenly disconnects from the ground and begins floating towards you. And she goes, Oh, it is so good to see my daughter embrace her true form. All right, your mom's hot. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I mean, that part of it feels good. Uh, Maribel, Maribel, remember me? It's old God. I give uh, old God a low five. <laughs> <laughs> I flash him the L. Uh, and she goes... Oh, Cobb, it's so good to see you again. It's been a long time since we've had a roll in the hay. All right, Cobb, wow. stay cool. Stay uh, cool. She's talking about sex, man. I'm yeah. getting kind of... I'm getting a little chub. It's not the Maribel. Cobb's gonna, Cobb's gonna roll for horniness. I don't understand uh -huh. how I'm the least horny one here. <laughs> Cobb got a three on horniness. You're right. I'm gonna stay focused. That's right. <laughs> not even thinking about it. How would that even work? Yep. It's like old fungal network down there. How does that even work? Exactly. How does it even work? Explain it to me. There's a lot of holes everywhere, it's dude. <laughs> Mima number two, because on my Mima hierarchy, that's where you fall. And actually, in terms of the crick, you fall even lower than that. Um. I'm curious why you see me now as sort of this algae sea goddess, and you're calling this my true form. Well, I suppose the algae part of it is a little strange and unexpected, but I was speaking of the fungal form in general. How did you become a water lady? Wouldn't you like to know? I would like to know. Well, Who tell don't me. Tell her. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I can't help but brag. I can't help but brag. I got another Mima. Actually, you're Mima number three. Oh, is that right? I got a water Mima. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. You're three Ma. Yeah, you're three Ma. <laughs> uh, she looks over at all you guys and she goes, Oh, Moonshine, I'm more than just a three Ma. Because I got four little babies here with my spores in them. Uh, and she looks over at Old Cobb, Balnor, Beverly, and Moonshine. All four of you guys have crick rot. It just makes me so happy to see y'all. I could just cry. And you see her black pupils begin crying these black tears. And suddenly, Bev and Moonshine, you guys and Balnor and Old Cobb start crying these black tears. Everyone with crick rot, go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. Mm. Oh, so if fuck. I have, I'm immune to being charmed, or I have advantage against being charmed. It, it, this have, is charm. This yep. is charm, so I get advantage on this. You do. 
Shout out to the two crew, but I'm going with the 19. Oh, baby. Which is 28. 28? Yeah. Because that's Jesus, that moonshine. <laughs> Shit. No, it's not a 28. I'm sorry. It's a 25. That's okay. That passes. 17? 17 is not enough. <gasps> Ooh. So, Moonshine, you're able to just will the tears away. You feel them dissipate and grow weaker as they mix with the water and algae of your new fungal form. So, do I look like I was just wearing a lot of mascara? (laughs) Yeah, you look like you just had a good cry, but just a good regular cry. So, I'm like kind of a hot mess right now. Yeah. (laughs) But Beverly, Olcob, and Balnor, you see the tears spread and stick to their faces and their bodies swell and you see these thick black veins popping out from under their skin and their eyes go black. Everybody roll initiative. Oh, fuck. 19. 14. It's 14. <laughs> uh, 12. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> Do I even need to roll? <laughs> yes, because okay. you will you will get into the fight eventually, hopefully. <laughs> okay. <so> good. <laughs> Hard one, you are first. All right. I see what's happening here and... I guess this band is lucky that I never had a mother. (laughs) And I'm going to swing my axe at her. Go ahead. Does an 18 hit her? An 18. This is always the moment of truth because you're like, what is this person's Yeah, let's see. I mean, I I guess I'm imagining that it hits her and then somehow hurts me. (laughs) An 18 does hit her. All right. All right. Go ahead and go ahead and crack it. She's wearing a dress. She can do something cool when people hit her, but no one's near her yet. Okay. Mm. That hits her for nine damage. Nine damage. Is she, how's she looking? <laughs> she's, she's on death's door, dude. She's awesome. She's super fucked up. And I'll take my second attack. Go for it. 25. That hits. 10. 10 damage. I'm not going to do my action surge because I don't know how this is going to affect her at all. So at the end of Hard One's turn, she's going to take a legendary action. You see she does the come hither motion at Beverly, uh, and Beverly, you are compelled to go join. Coming, mother. <laughs> yeah, it just looks Grandma, like your mom. he's just a little boy. Keep that <laughs> finger out of here. I skip uh, over to her. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like Martha Togold, but with a giant mushroom face, but oh. nothing looks weird here. Just... I like your hair, mother. <laughs> what did you oh. do? Did you Be... go to the salon? Thank Be careful, you. young babe. You're going to get stuck in them buns. <laughs> <laughs> she points at Hard One and goes, get him, my little baby boy. Hey, you're my little baby boy. <laughs> what are you doing? Beverly, go ahead and swing on Hard One. Mushroom mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your goddamn scoutmaster. You put that sword down. <laughs> you are a bad scoutmaster. That's the oh, that's the crick you're rot talking. Want to take that back, Luna. That is the crick rot talking. I was a good scoutmaster, <laughs> and this is all super fucked up. That's a twenty to hit. Doesn't hit. That doesn't hit. He's oh, a nice. fucking rock, dude. Yeah. Hell yes. All right. Well, do I take my second attack? Uh, you don't. You okay. just do the one. Oh, don't get too excited, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, hey, <laughs> chill, dude. Finally. Uh, Moonshine, that is your turn. Okay. So I have haste, which means I get an extra action each round. Fuck. Nice. Okay. And also my AC is plus two, so now I'm 19 armor Jesus. class. Jesus. And um, I get advantage on dexterity saving throws. She, she should have made a speech. And um, <laughs> my speed is doubled. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightning bolt her. Okay. So she has to make a dexterity saving throw more than 17. She does not. I need 8d6. Yo, volunteer. What? There it comes. Ooh, baby. So 29 lightning. Nice. Woo. And then I'm going to just attack her. It's a big old bolt. Cool. Go ahead and do an attack. Does 18 hit? Yes, yes it did. does. So Moonshine rushes forward to attack. Okay, that's going to be 11, pl- and then I spores her for 12. <laughs> okay, so 20, 23 damage? Yeah. Damn, Mercy. so you club her with your shillelagh and then shoot your seeds at her. Uh, you see these little vines burst out and cut her, and yeah. she goes, where were you on that, my little halfling son? I'm sorry. <laughs> Deep down in the sunken place, Beverly is like, I'm so dirty. I hate this. I hate this. Ew, 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 ew. (laughs) And then at the end of Moonshine's turn, she's going to take a legendary action to swing on Moonshine with a pseudopod attack. You see she's got like a tentacle that whips out at Moonshine. Uh, 19. 19. Yeah. 19 hits. 
Damn, she got... Just hit, though. She got a 19. Mother, I respect you with all my heart, but a tentacle doesn't really make sense with the rest of your kind of theming. Y'all, it's a pseudopod. Okay, I mean, just you're I, like... I feel that feels you're weird. You're like a fungal mushroom person. Right, what That's is it? Like I feel a, like you're Describe a pseudopod. You know? Describe a pseudopod. A pseudopod, wouldn't that be like something that a, like a prehistoric like fish would have? Oh, yeah, like um, like, like Kind of like a tentacle, it yeah. looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've been fucking saying. Okay, mushrooms don't have those, though, mother. Right, I'm saying it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> I barf. <laughs> uh, she does 16 damage to you, Moonshine. Okay. I got them temporary hit points, so... And that is Balnor's turn. You see Balnor's pupils are all black. He's clearly super brainwashed. He just goes, guys, I think she's good. (laughs) I'm going to kind of wait this out. And you know what? If someone comes near the bags, I might just let them root through them. Balnor, no. (laughs) Listen to what you're saying. You're right. (laughs) He tries to force force the spores out of him. Badnor. You're a, a madman. <laughs> yeah. Malnor. Gonna, he tries to uh, force the spores out of him. He gets to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, he's going to do a squeaky toot. And he passes. Oh. He screws it up. I can't believe I said that about the bags. You're doing great. great. I, bl- I blink at Balnor. I'll watch the bags. <laughs> he stays back. Beth, that's your turn. You are currently still brainwashed. Hardwin and Moonshine, you see that his pupils are still black. Uh, Bev, this looks like your mom. You know, just your mushroom face mom. This oh, is yeah. just normal. Oh, that's just their, that's her Sunday hat. This is my Sunday hat. That's what we're she going, wears to church. We're going to church. Oh. And there's this big bad guy with an axe trying to chop down my favorite lemon Do tree. Do you think they'll have Tim Hortons after church, mother? Oh, of course, baby. Oh, uh, boy. But, Bev, for a split second, you're like, wait, we don't get Tim Hortons? There's no Tim Hortons in Galateron. We go to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> uh, go, ahead and oh. ro- go ahead and roll a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> my nose bleeds a little bit. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to oh. Wait, does my lucky blade only work on? It's only on attacks. Oh, shout out to the two crew. Bev remains in a stupor. Terrible. Oh, you know what? On Beverly's turn, she'll take a legendary action and she'll attack. Yeah. Who's up in there? That's my sure. mommy. She'll attack Moonshine. Bring it on, come on. She hits. Again? Yeah, she Damn rolled an bitch. 18. Uh, th- an 18? All oh, right. Yeah, she yeah, does so. 19 damage. <sighs> I'm fine. Uh, that it is her turn. Y'all got no respect for your elders. I am the fungal queen. And you see she grows more pseudopods that burst from her in sprays of black gunk. And she snaps three of them at you, Moonshine. And she hits all three times. Damn. Hey, that's your daughter, right? Yeah, but she's not as well-behaved as this one. And she rubs Beverly's head with a slimy pseudopod. <laughs> 10 on the first hit. 16 on the second hit. That's 26. 13 on the last hit. I'm still standing. Wow. Oh boy. Well, because I get the temporary hit points from being in symbiotic. And right, yeah. right. Cool. That is Old Cobb's turn. Old Cobb is going to try to shake out of it. He is in crick rotted mode. He rolls a six. He does not. Guys, I think she might be a good guy. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. You guys are not getting back together. Hey, Cobb, wait a minute. If this is my mom, then you're basically like my dad now. Yeah, I think we're a family, y'all. Let's be a family. I think we might all be a family. I start trying to attach mushrooms to his face. (laughs) Uh, that is Luna's turn. She takes. Uh, she's gonna try to bite her and uh, swing at her with her sword. Someone tell Luna not to bite her. <laughs> Misses both times. Okay. This is fucked up, dude. Yeah, it's fucked up. Get your head in the game. Ow! Remember. <laughs> uh, and then she's gonna use a legendary action to have Old Cobb shoot at Luna. Stay back. That's my girlfriend. Get him, Dad. Oh, of course. <laughs> I love that Beverly's role-playing being charmed. Uh, He shoots and he misses. He does not hit Luna. That is back around to hard one. All right. Um, I don't know if I... Like, I couldn't rip the mushrooms off of my friends' heads and have them be normal, could I? I'll let you... If you want to save your action, I'll let you give him advantage on his wisdom saving throw. Hmm. Like, slap me out of it? Yeah. I'll let you guys, like, role-play it. You tell me what you do. I swing at her with my axe. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just want to. I nobody. Else, every yeah. Mm, we okay. need to hit her. Uh, Twenty three to hit. Cool. Fifteen damage. She moves Beverly. 
in front of her. You hit Beverly for 15 damage. God damn it. Oh. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, it's an honor to take damage for you, mother. <laughs> You're a good little boy. You're Stop a good boy. collecting parents, you little shit. <laughs> I throw Beverly. <laughs> Can I push him really Hard far one. away? No. Join uh, us. Join us in the network. You can do like a grapple check against Beverly okay. if you want to push him out of the way. Um, then I will, or I guess if I'm going to do that, then I might as well. She can only she can only do her like move. make people attack for her move if they're within five feet of her. Ah. So you can like kick Beverly out of the way. I guess I'll kick Beverly. <laughs> okay. Beth, do a, a strength check against okay. him. You guys are wrestling each oh, other. No. This is very dramatic. Oh no! I have oh. Scoutmaster versus Scout. <laughs> oh, that's a. Uh, uh, 23. Ooh. I'll use a luck point. Okay. Nice. You just keep kicking me. <laughs> and it still isn't going to be enough. Oh. Beverly pushes you off of him. Can I, like, slap Beverly across the face a bunch with my action <laughs> surge and uh, give him advantage or something? Ah. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you, like, get up in his face and say, I'm your scoutmaster or something. You're going to yeah. need to, like, can really try to get through to him. Yeah, I'm going to run over to Bev, and I'm going to say, you have enough mothers, you have enough fathers, just fucking focus and fight this lady. <sighs> I'm going to slap him on the face a bunch. Okay, so oh, he's going to, oh, he'll get oh. advantage on his wisdom saving throw right. during his turn. Uh, and then at the end of your turn, oh, she's going to use another legendary action to attack Moonshine. Uh, and she's going to hit. That's a 25 to hit. My God! Wow, she's like a regular Barney Stinson, right? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, 17, 17 damage, Moonshine. I'm down. Uh, Moonshine goes down. Oh shit! Okay. That is death that is Moonshine. Throw. Moonshine, go ahead and give me a death saving throw. Mm. That's a fail. Okay, so Moonshine has one fail, but on Balnor's turn, Balnor the Brave. Sorry, guys, but I'm going to have to leave the bags. <laughs> <laughs> and he <laughs> runs forward, reaches into Hard One's Vicious V. Sorry there, buddy. <laughs> More grabs okay. the health potion. Why do you keep it there? Uh, runs over to Moonshine and uh, pours it in her mouth. It's weird to have someone else heal me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Feels good, right? Oh Elven God. boots on the other foot. <laughs> All right, so it was a greater healing potion, so... Let's go ahead and roll 4d4 plus 4. 4d4. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, Balnor. You get 19 back. Whoa. Ooh. Hell yeah. Ooh. Moonshine, you pop back up. I pop back up. I hope I did a good job, Moonshine. Balnor, you did great. <laughs> I, give him a, I give him a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> I'm sorry to your wife if you had one. <laughs> <laughs> or if you will have one. Or if you will have one in the future. All timelines are possible. <laughs> Infinite then, Balnor theory. <laughs> so you see Balnor is feeding this potion to Moonshine. You back off, Balnor. Oh, you back off, no! Balnor. She uses a legendary action to go after Balnor. <gasps> Easy. Oh, no, I feel so bad. But he was helping me. I don't like that. She hits. She does hit. Oh. Shit. That's a lot of clicky clack. She does 30 damage to Balnor because he takes Fuck. poison damage. But Balnor is still up. Oh. But okay. he's so hurt. Ugh. Go to the bags, Balnor. <laughs> okay. I got a question. Yeah. I got a question. First off, I, I woke right up. Can I have a reaction right when I wake up? No. No, Damn. no, no. You, yeah. Second question. Uh huh. If I were to cast, since I get a d6 to all healing, if I make a spectral pawpaw, is he going to get an extra d6? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Tight. That's an extra nipple. Bev, that is your turn. Go all ahead right. and roll the wisdom saving throw with advantage uh, as Hard One slaps your face okay. around. As Hard One is slapping me, I, I kind of picture myself like. I am in like a sunken place, but it's like I'm just covered in mushrooms. I'm like on a bed of mushrooms, like deep within my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, you see Maribel is there with you and she looks completely normal. Mm -hmm. And you're in your house in, oh. uh, <laughs> and you're in your house in but the later like, on. There are like mushrooms like peeking out of like the cupboard. There's mushrooms peeking out, but this just seems like your mom, like Maribel comes out with some sticky buns. Oh, those do oh, look good, honey, Mom. You want, you want some food? It's just your dad's gonna be back from being a successful oh, green knight. It's been so bit. long. Yeah. Wake it's... the fuck up, you <laughs> huh? adorable little half. Who's that? Who's that at the window? Shit. <laughs> it's so bad, honey. Don't worry about it. That's a 20 plus 4, 24. You fucking kick out of it. Yeah, yeah yes. you hear as. 
I punch, I, I cold cock my mom in the face. Yes. Oh, how dare you do that to your own mother? You're not my mom. Yeah, yeah. So that is the end of ben, Beverly's one turn. One of your dads is real hurt. Oh, she did it. Oh, shoot. She oh, fucked shoot. up oh, Belmore. Dang. She fucked up Belmore. How could you do this? I'm so hurt, Bev. <laughs> how could you do that to one of my newer and cooler dads? <laughs> cooler? You know what? <laughs> I liked hurting your dad. Uh, and she's going to go and take three swings on Beverly. You don't have a matronly bone in your body. You don't even have bones, it looks like. Oh, Jesus, she rolled so well. Jesus, uh, she's not missing Yeah, she got step. a 29 to hit and two 27s to hit. Yikes. A 29 and two 27s. <laughs> Uh, that hit. That hits, <laughs> yeah. believe it or not. Desperate huh. to look at her stat sheet. Desperate to know what she's adding to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Monster of the Month style. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Oh, man. 39 damage. <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> and that is Old Cobb's turn. You see oh, Old Cobb goes, Beverly, I thought you were on my side, man. Sorry. This is my girlfriend, I dude. Think, I think I've had enough dads. <laughs> uh, Old Cobb fails his saving throw. Uh, and she's going I to use her reaction. Happy. She has him fly in close, and he's going to take a swing on hard one. Oh. God, you're my best friend, dude. <laughs> I don't know why I want to do this, but I feel like we're not best friends anymore, man. That really hurts oh, to hear. Shoot. Oh, P. Uh, he misses with his short sword, but he's now uh, pretty close. Uh, that is Luna's turn. She takes two swings. She misses both times. Great. Uh, that is back up to Hard One's turn. Luna, I really need you to focus here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we want her not to focus. Get crazy. Yeah, get crazy. Yeah. Uh, and you see Luna's just trying to pump herself up. Oh, oh, I'm a fucking werewolf. I'm a fucking werewolf. <laughs> get loopy, Luna. <laughs> <laughs> get lupus. So I guess I'm going to try to kick Old Cobb away from Maribel so I can hit her. Okay. Well, Old Cobb uses, had to use his reaction for oh, her so to he call him in. So this turn, he can't do anything. Great. You can so just swing he's only got she's only got Old Cobb left, right? She's only under got her spell. Old Cobb under left spell. O- under her spell. Okay. Um, I'm going to do some arcane. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Wait a minute. When you pull that out, I'm like, what is that? It's all fine. You... I have it under control, Beverly. You said that was chapstick. It is chapstick. It's the best kind it's, of chapstick there is. It's going to take something rough and make it smoother. <laughs> so, <laughs> Are you doing okay. the level two arcane or the level one arcane? What's the one that fucks her up more? I mean, level two is more unstable, but it's more powerful. Then I'll do that one. Okay. This is the one where I could just straight up blow up? Yes. <laughs> okay. Hard one takes a big snort of this yellow arcane. You see bolts Ow. of lightning <laughs> are shooting through you. Uh, go ahead and first roll the attack. And if you hit, you can do uh, an extra d6. You do a level two, so you can do three d6 damage. Great. That was a 19 to hit. That hits. So I roll my, do I roll my regular roll damage? Roll your regular attack. And then I add three sixes? And then you add three d6s. Three d6s, cool. 24 damage. You swing into her and lightning explodes from your axe as you do all this damage. Go ahead and roll a wild magic surge. I just did that. I rolled a 17. Is that good or bad? 17 is good. You chill. (sighs) Nothing happens. You're able to contain it. Great. I'm going to take my second swing at her. Okay. Do I have any more arcane? Is it constitution? Uh, you, you You get to do it twice. Oh, okay. Great. Is it constitution saves that he does? No, no, it's no, wild it's magic surge. Oh. <clears throat> nah, fucking 20. Wow! <laughs> Dude, so with the arcane, you'll do double arcane damage. Oh my Hell god. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be insane. Uh, everyone's calling lightning. 48 damage. Woo! Holy shit! <laughs> Jesus, and hard one swings into her. The Lord of the 19 on that save, too. A 19 on the save? You just. Fully, drugs are okay. Yeah. Drugs are great. <laughs> Hard on. Drugs are good, Bev. Hard on huh. snorts this arcane. Lightning powers, swings into her twice, does so much damage, explosions of lightning. Fuck you freaking yeah. fry her and do a ton of damage. Yo, I turned we gotta it. get an RV and start figuring <laughs> out how to make our own arcane. I That's turned, really true. <laughs> I turned directly to the camera and said, I guess drugs are fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting less composed. She's going to go after hard one with her one of her legendary actions. Uh, and she get a, gets a 23 to hit. That does hit. 13 damage. 
That is Moonshine's turn. Okay. Uh, I'm re-symbiotic entitying. I still have a wild shape left. And then as my bonus action, I create a spectral pawpaw at a level fucking four. Whoa. And because everyone gets an extra D6, anyone standing near a spectral pawpaw gets three D6 of healing. I create it on next to me and Balnar, so we both get it. Thank Sweet. you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you see the greatest spectral papa you've ever seen uh, emerges in a beam of light. He's got 16, nay, 32 nipples, <laughs> uh, a big belly like Buddha. He appears meditating next to moonshine. Mother, we must cleanse the land and save this place. Everyone, drink of my chunky milk. And then I just slap Balnor's face onto a tit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is actually quite good. This is, I love a warm teat of milk. So like the papa emerges and instantly milk is spewing out of his nose. <laughs> yeah. Just like right into your mouth. Mother, I am back. <laughs> we will be your milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my little grandbaby. <laughs> Don't you dare. Yeah, you can't be in his life. You you revoked the right to be in his life. You can visit at Easter and that's it. Uh, after I, I suckle of the milk, <laughs> I suck it of the milk and then I use my reaction to uh, algae her for 12. Nice. Good job, mother. <laughs> that is Balnor's turn. How does Spectral Papa work? Whenever you or a creature you can see moves into the spirit space for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, you can cause a spirit to restore 1d6 hit points. But I did it at a level 4, so it's 2d6. And then because I have an yeah, extra d6. Sweet. So, so Balnor's going to get another 3d6. Hell yeah. He's doing pretty good. He's looking pretty healthy. Nice, Balnor. Oh, I love a healthy Balnor. So, uh... Am I sticking around here, up in the mix? If you're feeling or... healthy, I guess go to the bag. Yeah, I, just, I, I, moved, I moved my legs and sort of like uh, <laughs> yeah. out of here. Move a lot of tuna like sandwiches blood. in there. Might get bad with all the fungi around. That's right. Go yeah, take a bite mold. of it. All right. Balnor, you are the most of us. You, you must remain safe. Uh, We're he, afraid of mold, not of algae, though. Uh, he runs back. Beverly, that's you. I, I use my amulet to heal up a little bit. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to attack. But first, let me do my healing damage. Okay. Or healing whatever. Healing the opposite of damage. Yeah. <laughs> I take uh, 15 HP. Okay, I'm feeling a little healthier. Um, got that rosiness back to my cheeks. Uh, and I want to Divine Smite. Cool. Take At a swing the second level. Okay, yeah. well, you got to see if you hit. All right. Oh, <laughs> I might. <laughs> he rolled a one. <laughs> I rolled a one. <laughs> lucky, lucky. Lucky, go ahead, swing again, mm -hmm. yeah. Arguably lucky. Okay, well, an eight. That's not that much luckier, but uh, eight plus 10. Oh, 18. <laughs> 18, you do hit. Jeez, yeah. you guys hit yeah. for a lot now. 13 normal damage. Mm -hmm. And then at the second level, that's 3d8s of radiant damage. Okay. Nice. 13. That's 13 radiant damage. Okay. And then, uh, just as a little flourish, a flaming cherry upon the, the Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is 1d6 of fire damage. Sweet. All right, that's three more damage right there. At the end of your turn, she's uh -oh. going to do an attack on you. Fine. She gets a 20 to hit. Ooh, that hits. That hits. Oh. No. Mm. 16 damage. Okay. Then it is her turn. Oh, you no. see she once again holds up her hand and goes, I've lost a little bit of control of this situation, so how about all my babies come back to mama? And you see her black pupils begin crying these black tears. Everybody with Crick Rot, give me wisdom saving throws. God damn it. All right. This is charming, right? This is charm, yeah. Come oh, on, Bev. I can smell those sticky buns. That time I did get a 28. Oh. Wow. Nice. Another eight. Um, but the wait. Prodigal daughter, she cannot be charmed. Four. 13, that doesn't do it. That does not do it. Shoot. Oh. Bev, Cobb, oh. and. Balnor are taken over by no! the Crick Rock again. This time, I picture us all as a family together, <laughs> like Von Trapp style. We're all singing. Uh, oh, it is Old Cobb's turn. Old Cobb is going to try to get out of it. He fails. She oh. is going to use a legendary action at the end of Cobb's turn to attack Hard One. Uh, she hits for 12 damage. Okay. Uh, then it is Luna's turn. Luna swings two times. She hits once with her greatsword for 16 damage. 
There you go. Finally does some damage. Yeah. Oh no, she only does half. She doesn't have a magic weapon. Ay. It's all right, oh, Wolf Bub. Luna, gotta um, get in the fray, my girl. Fuck, I tried. You did. You're doing great. Ow. <laughs> uh, then she's going to use a legendary action to attack hard one again. She rolls a nat one. Yes. She goofs oh, so finally. hard. Legendary uh, fail. <laughs> <laughs> so if all my friends are possessed. Hard one, your turn. I guess I'm gonna try to swing at her and hope that I don't hit somebody else. Yeah. Okay. It's a nat 20. Cool, go ahead and do your damage. I'm gonna oh, fucking hurt Cobb. Do your damage. No. 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 You have to. <laughs> You absolutely have to do your damage. No, don't do it. Eat your dice. <laughs> Go ahead and do your damage. <laughs> Swallow it. You're going to make me hit fucking Cobb. I'm with a nat 20. I should be able to kick him out of the way and, hurt, and hit her. Go ahead and do your damage, man. <laughs> uh, and reroll your ones. And my twos. Shout out to the two crew. Eat your vegetables. Reroll your ones and twos. 26. To Maribel. As you swing in <laughs> on her. She commands Beverly to jump in no, the way. Son of a bitch. 27 I damage am to Beverly. 15 going on 16. Oh. Look at me sing and dance. Uh, how much damage? 27. I'm no. way down. Bev goes down. Okay. Well, that means I can't hit him with my second attack, right? <laughs> uh, no, you can't. You certainly can't hit Beverly. But I could hit Cobb. And you will make me hit Cobb. What I'm if gonna... you just push her away from Cobb so that anyone who. Hits him in the or push use your action to push Beverly to the healing spirit. Yeah, can I do oh. that? Like push, be- <laughs> kick like me along toss the floor. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna toss Beverly <laughs> into the spectral papa <laughs> into his waiting arms. <laughs> yeah, into I'll, his waiting milk. I'll allow that. Okay, it's so you a fountain of milk. It's like the uh, it's like the Bellagio fountain, but with milk. <laughs> yeah, you critically strike Beverly. <laughs> you like. Whoop, whoop. My you bad, get, bud. <laughs> you like get under his armor into his ribs. You see, she for a second like lets go of her influence over Beverly, so Beverly can just look at you, super betrayed, huh. with his real eyes. Why? why? You <laughs> see what he's doing to you, youngin? That was on you, pal. <laughs> why would you I'm gonna sort of just like finish my follow through in the axe uh, and like let Bev uh, like flick his body off of the axe into speci- <laughs> uh, spectral pop pop. <laughs> You bat him in a spectral pawpaw. Uh, Bev, go ahead and roll, because it's a level 4 4d6. Yes, I said it wrong earlier. It's actually 4d6, because it's a second level spell, but gets an extra d6 for a level, and I get an extra d6. Ooh, again. like a d6. So 4d6 d- never ends up being that nice, but whatever, we can go to Okay, all right, 4d6. So Bev Ooh. is going to pop back up. He's no longer going to be possessed, right? I'm going to say critical hitting Beverly. <laughs> you sufficiently knock him out of his stupor, uh, <laughs> but you do hurt him real bad. So Bev, it's ultimately good for the party. Bev, you wake up <laughs> and agrees. Hard One has just hurt you real bad. Hard One, why? <laughs> I get milk in my mouth. <laughs> uh, and that is Sorry, her kid. last legendary action of the round. She's going to attack Hard One. Uh, she might miss this time because you're... That'd be a fun. hard dude. She only got an 18. Yes, that misses. Hardest that misses one. even when I'm not a hard dude, son. Damn. <laughs> that is Moonshine's turn. I'm just going to Lightning Boulder again. Okay, and that's a deck save throw? Yeah. Okay. She's got to hit 17. She fails. Nice. <laughs> hey. Also, she'll Fuck catch on fire, bitch. <laughs> 22. 22 damage? Yeah, I rolled pretty poorly. She's, but still, she's starting to look pretty messed up. She's hmm. also on fire, right? A little bit. Uh, yeah, she catches on fire. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> uh, that is Balnor's turn. He's going to try to snap out of it. Come on, Balnor. I Come think on, Balnor. this is my mom. <laughs> he does not snap out of it. It is my mom. Think about sandwiches, Balnor. <laughs> uh, Bev, that's your turn. I'm going to channel divinity. Ooh. Okay. Um, I utter ancient words that are painful for Fae and fiends to hear. Okay. I present my holy symbol as an action. Each fae or fiend within 30 feet that can hear must make a wisdom saving throw. On fail, creatures turn for one minute or until it takes damage. Uh, turns, creatures must spend uh, turns trying to move as far away as it can. All right, she's going to make that saving, saving throw. throw. Yeah. She gets a 23. Uh, she against- leans up to your holy amulet, sticks her face against it, and just lets it sizzle. <laughs> Feels good, youngin. Ah. Oh. 
Man, she's creepy. Gosh, it smells like a really nice barbecue. <laughs> Could we have a barbecue, Mom? Ah, ugh, never mind. <laughs> that is Maribel's turn. She's going to take uh, three strikes down on Beverly. Ugh. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. She might have missed a bunch. That would be great. Does a 19 hit you? That is my AC. Okay, so she hits twice. Shit. Not three times. All right, I'm uh. probably down again. 18 damage on the first hit. I'm down. Okay. Cool. Bev goes ah. down. Uh, second swing... We'll go to hard one then. 19? No. 19 does not hit. No. Misses hard one. Yeah. That's what's up. Dope. <laughs> I love being a rock. <laughs> that is Old Cobb's turn. <laughs> Old Cobb is going to try to get out of it. Come on, buddy. Uh, ooh. Old Cobb snaps out of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was. Wait. Have I mi- What have I missed? Everything. Everything. What's Everything. going on? You yeah. shot. You tried to stab you me, said, man. Do I have crick rot? Just run Why away. Why do I have the sword out? I have a gun. You what the hell to- am I doing with a sword? <laughs> yeah, you said we weren't best friends, Kyle. What? You said we weren't you best friends. You are my friend. best friend, man. <laughs> I love you, you are, dude. Man. I love, love you, man. <laughs> he starts crying. Okay. At the oh, end of no. Old Cobb's turn, she's going to use a legendary action to go after hard one. She's taking an attack on him. She rolls a two. Yes. Shout out to the two crew. That's one miss. <laughs> One wasted goddamn legendary action for hmm. my goddamn devil Legend. lord person. Let's go, Luna. Uh, that is Luna's turn. She takes Luna. two swings. She rolls a goddamn three and a four. This is not Luna, good for her. you are not earning that dinner. <laughs> Back up to hard one. All right, I'm swinging at her with the axe. Nobody can jump in front of it now. No, Balnor's back. Bev is back, yeah. Great, 21 to hit. Bev is kind of back. Balnor's by the bags. He can't cause any trouble. Bagnor. <laughs> Uh, nine damage. Nine damage, okay. And I'll take my second swing. Another 21 to hit. Okay. 12 damage. All right. She's starting to look pretty messed up. I'm rolling so poor on the damage, though. Hmm. At the end of Hard One's turn, she's going to command Balnor to rush forward and attack Moonshine. Bring Why not? On, come on. <laughs> Uh, he gets a 19 to hit. That's a Balnor That's crit. That's me. Oh. No, 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 no. He didn't roll a 19. Oh, okay. 19. Yeah, he hits. Jesus. 14 damage from Balnor. God. How? Hey, <laughs> Balnor. Do that on other true. people. As he, as he hits me, I'm like, I'm, honestly, I'm just proud of you for getting <laughs> stronger. <laughs> It's so poetic that he hits you underneath the spectral pawpaw that you, you use <laughs> to oh save him. Oh, there's like raindrops of milk pouring down. <laughs> yeah, it's Beautiful. like slow motion. The slice <laughs> is coming through like drops of milk. Oh, no. There's like red blood mixing <laughs> with the milk. <laughs> yeah, that's like the Quentin Tarantino thing is my blood <laughs> combining with the milk. So Balnor connects and slices into Moonshine for 14 damage. Moonshine, give me a DC 17 constitution saving throw to keep spectral pawpaw going with your concentration I do not get it you do uh, not get it mother no <laughs> the bill's dried up disappear as uh, <laughs> okay. Balnor swings into you Moonshine that is your turn right so I'm bringing Bevy back okay. yup <laughs> I'm gonna heal him for 21 to Bev ooh and then 12 algae to my girl jeez she's nice. looking pretty messed up Balnor's turn he's gonna try to get out of it I did a good job getting rid of the big possum? Question mark? No, no, that was bad. No. Hard one. That was, that was bad, bad Nor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does. He snaps out of it. Okay. Balnor. Hey, hey try to not let that happen again. I'm sorry. What happened? I was over by the bags. Maybe and- just run further away because so far you're only coming back in to die and attack us. Crawl so into run. a bag, Balnor. Yeah. <laughs> Become the bag. Beverly, that's your turn. <laughs> I want to try and get near um, Balnor and Old Cobb. Okay. Uh, and myself, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm going to cast Bless on all three of us, Okay, which is going to allow us to uh, roll a d4 and add that number to attacks and saving rolls. Dope. So that should hopefully help a little bit with these uh, <laughs> uh, these legendary throws. Yeah. And that's an action, so I guess to do that. And that is Maribel's turn, and on her turn, she begins crying these black tears again. Oh, Cobb, you're breaking my heart. Don't you love me? Everyone with Crick Rot, give me wisdom saving throws. Ooh. Uh, what do I need to beat? 18. Oh, I got an 18. Oh, Perfect. Plus thank my bonuses. God, I got a ni- I got a 19. Nice. I was worried. Okay. Uh, Old Cobb, Moonshine, Beverly all pass. Balnor does not pass. Did he get into the bag when we told him to? <laughs> no, he, that was the end of his turn. He was uh, He's up in the mix. We got to put a bag over he's his brain. Fucking Balnor. 
That is Olcob's turn. <laughs> Olcob has not done anything. No, yet. remember we care about should him we now. Just, no, no, I do care about him. I'm like, should we knock him out for his own good? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Olcob points his gun at Maribel, and he goes, "I'm sorry, but I should have done this a long time ago." And he takes two shots, Uh-oh. and he hits both times. <gasps> oh. He does 23 damage. Oh, oh my shit. god. Yeah, Cobb. And she's looking pretty fucked up. You see, she like is just pure fucking devil. Her face goes crazy. Her black eyes are oozing tears. And she goes, I never loved you. And she swings at old Cobb with a legendary action. And she hits him. That's not your girlfriend anymore, man. <laughs> see, this is what we were Why saying. Why she saying that, man? You can do better. Trust uh, me, as she, a guy who's been in a relationship, I I know. <laughs> she hits him for 16. That is Luna's turn. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Emily here to talk to you about Aura Frames. Mother's Day is coming up and some of us are looking for a way to shower the maternal figures in our life with love. Well, look no further. Aura Frames are the digital picture frames that bring all your photos and videos together in one gorgeous, high-resolution display. They're super easy to set up. They save you from the struggle of printing and framing your favorite photos, but most importantly, they help you stay connected with family that live far away. That's because you can kind of preload a bunch of pictures onto the frame, but you also get to keep adding pictures, and you can invite the rest of your family to add pictures. The gifts you make mean the most So this year, turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can visit AuraFrames.com slash Papa to get up to $30 off on their best-selling frames. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash P-A-W-P-A-W. Plus, listeners can get free shipping with code P-A-W-P-A-W at checkout. This deal ends on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye, sweeties. Hey there, Nadpoles. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost, folks? Well, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to around $200. Holy hell. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch that one show or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little funky. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw that is rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw one more time for you rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw thank you come on luna fuck it i'm still here luna. it's now or never <laughs> i'm still here she hits once uh <laughs> good for her uh, <laughs> that's she luna. Hits, she hits with her bite hot. sometimes uh, you're not sometimes <laughs> you got crick rat she does that <laughs> <laughs> she does a big four damage, and then she's going to roll uh, with her dog mouth to see if she gets Crick Rot. <laughs> and she fails, and she gets Crick Rot. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like I predicted it by just saying that. I feel bad. Oh, no. Uh, so then uh, she's just going to keep going at Old Cop this with another like legendary when you, action. When you have a crush on somebody, and then you like go see their open mic night. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you know what? Luna's 
all right. Yeah, I know. Both of us are kind of like, you can have her. I don't want it to be weird between us. She's hey, all yours. Yeah, Moonshine, no, I actually really believe in you and Luna. Oh, because I <laughs> felt like there was like a good vibe between oh, you two. The kiss, the kiss, that was so you guys. I, honestly, I did that. I was the one who moved that. I was I acting so. like someone else Chewy did it. So one of that. you better date her. I got a lot riding on this. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, old Cobb and Maribel are in a nightmare <laughs> fight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All up in each other. Uh, hard one, that is your turn. I'm going to swing on Maribel. Old Cobb, I'm glad you're over your ex. Let's try to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> That'll hit. That's 27. 27, yeah. God damn, fucking three on the damage. Uh, nine damage. Nine damage. She's looking real messed up. I'll take my second attack. Another 27. Fuck Jesus. Man. I'm rolling so good on the D20 and so bad on the 12. That's a little better, though. 15 damage. Hmm. So hard one. You see Cobb and Maribel are, like, wrestling, just going at each other. She is in a frenzy, not being strategic at all. Hard one, finish her. Ooh. I walk up behind her. I look at Moonshine. And I hand her my axe. (laughs) Oh, my Laura. This is your battle. Okay, my palms are sweating, um, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna go straight up stab her in the back like she did my real Mima. You go up behind Maribel. The axe sticks in her back. Maribel shrieks. You see the fungus atop her flesh begins to curl up and die and fall off. There are gushes of black ooze coming off as her skin literally peels off. You see black ooze shooting out of her pores, her eyes, and her mouth. Moonshine, she turns to you. You see that sort of the more devilish qualities of her, like the fungal form, start to melt away. And you see the face of this like skeletally thin woman. Does she look like me? She looks like she's related to you, but okay. she doesn't look exactly like you. Okay. And she looks at you, and she's shaking, and she goes, Jolene, and she collapses. And you see this monster, this fungal queen, is suddenly this frail, skeletal, thin woman with stark white skin and she's shaking and she looks like how you saw her in the flashback but like deathly, deathly pale and deathly ill and uh, you see Old Cobb rushes over uh, to her um, but she's reaching out towards you Moonshine Jolene is that you? Yeah it's me Jolie? It's me. Why'd you do all this, Maribel? Jolie, I need to show you something. I wanted to, I tried to talk to you. I tried to talk to you that day, Jolie. I'm sorry, Jolene. Well, I'm I tried, here now. Talk I to me now. I tried to talk to you. She holds her hand out, and you see, like, a little pseudopod come out, and she goes, Can I? Okay, I'll take her hand. I'll let her take my hand. Okay. She spores is you. You guys see these white and green spores, like, go into the air. And you guys all are tripping again, flashback style. Oh. You're suddenly transported back to that day when Jolene and Maribel fought. You see that the battle has just ended. Jolene offers her hand to Maribel but Maribel slaps it away. Young Cobb tries to console her, but she barrels right past him. You see her storm off into the woods, and once she's alone, she just starts weeping. And suddenly, you see a carriage pull up with a traveling gnomish wizard at the reins. What? Son of a bitch. And the gnome speaks up, and he goes, heck of a fight back there. I thought you had her. And Maribel goes, please, just leave me be. And he goes, I got something here. Would make you strong enough next time for sure. 
And she looks up at him curiously. And the gnome tosses her a book. You guys see it's the same book that you guys found in the cave with all the faces on it. He goes, on the house. I was having trouble selling it anyway. You guys see the gnome rides off. Maribel looks at it curiously. Suddenly, Maribel is back in the cave that you guys were exploring before, but the candelabras are up. You see that there are lit candles. She's got this little altar, this altar to Melora. You see she's got this book out on the altar. She eyes the book with temptation. She opens the cover and reads the first page. Your blood, your name, my power. You see her consider it for a second. And then she shakes out of it. You see she casts Dispel Magic. She holds her hand over it. There's a burst of arcane energy. The faces on the book stop moving. Maribel opens the book. No longer living. No longer faces moving. Maribel opens the book. Goes to an empty page in the book. And tears it out. And she tosses the book to the side. Into the corner of the room. And she begins writing in ink. Dear Jolene. I'm leaving the creek, not because I don't think you're going to be a good Meemaw, because, well, I think you're going to be a better one than I ever could have been, and I can't handle that. Not right now. I'm your older sister, and, and I'm, I'm jealous. I'm bitter. Bitter that you're stronger than me. Wiser than me. Kinder than me. I mean, for Melora's sake, I started a fight with you and you tried to shake my hand afterwards. Feel free to just tell me to piss off next time. I deserve it. I wish I could say this to your face, but I'm just, I'm not ready. I'm sorry for everything. We'll talk when I get back. I love you. Tell Cobb not to get his trousers in a tangle. I won't be long. Love. Maribel. You see her whistle and a raven swoops in. She ties the note to his little leg and sends him off. Just outside the cave, you see hiding near a bush and watching is the gnome. As the raven flies out, the gnome waves his hand and a bolt of energy shoots the bird right out of the sky. He walks over, grabs the letter, and smirks. You see he transforms from a gnome to a pale elf with long white hair. You guys know this to be the physical description of the necromancer Ilsed. Inside the cave, Maribel is packing a bag. Suddenly Ilsed enters and with a flick of his wrist, he pins her against the wall with a hold person spell. She tries to resist, but she's weakened from the fight earlier. Ilsed walks over to her and pulls out a dagger. He cuts her cheek and walks over to the book with the bloody knife. You see she's screaming as he wipes her blood on a blank page. He pulls out her letter and rips her signature from the bottom, then slaps it in the book. He holds his hand over the book, and you see black energy accumulating in his hand until finally the cover of the book begins to move again. The ripped-off piece of paper is suddenly magically reattached to the book. Maribel screams as she erupts into black flame. She instantly turns into her fungal form and breaks free from the hold person spell. She lunges for Ilsed and slaps the book and the dagger out of his hand, but Ilsed just smirks and teleports away. Maribel frantically tries to rip the page from the book, but it won't go. She tries to dispel the book, but it has no effect. With no choice left, she grabs the dagger and stabs herself. You see black fungus immediately begins to grow at the wound. It looks like Crick Rot. She's essentially Crick Rot Patient Zero. Maribel, barely clinging to life, crawls out of the cave and pulls herself over to the tree with her and Cobb's initials on it. You see she's reaching for it, pawing at the bark, and whispering, I'm sorry, Jolene. I'm sorry, Jolene. You watch as the good part of Maribel dies there at the tree. She slumps over, and when her eyes open back up, she looks angry and cruel. And with the help of her sickly gray pseudopods, she gets to her feet and marches back toward the crick. 
You see the ground around her dies, but the tree remains. You guys are back inside her lair. I'm glad I didn't behead her. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Glad Um, we got to see that through. Jolie, I didn't... I didn't realize I was going to get to say I was sorry. Well, here I am, and I'm going to heal you. I heal her. She's... All the life is out of her. She's been... Thank you. Uh, of course you're forgiven. I love you so much. You're my big sister. Uh, you see, she starts weeping. Uh, and Maribel, she's... Maribel, you are mad that I was wiser and, and braver than you, but don't you understand that you're the one who trained me to be that way? You, after all the things I've done, you're still so hospitable, Jolene. Well, I learned it from the best. You, sh- you sure as hell didn't learn it from me. And she laughs, uh, and she coughs. Uh, and she looks up at Cobb. Cobb, is that you? She reaches up and brushes his cheek. You, you, you look awful. <laughs> and old Cobb <laughs>, laughs. He goes, yeah, uh, I think maybe the last time you saw me, I was a little better for wear. And you see old Cobb is crying. You still got that vicious V, though. You Yay. still got that vicious V. <laughs> you should see. Oh, boy. The v is still there. You see, it's it's like when uh, a hospital patient has been drugged up so much that she, like, reaches her hand onto his junk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I cover Bev's eyes. Uh, you see old Cobb leans down, and he kisses her. And she closes her eyes to go in for the kiss. And when Cobb pulls back, she doesn't open her eyes. And she just smiles and says to herself, Jolene, I'm so glad. I'm so glad we got to work things out. Of course. I love you. I love you, Jolene. I'll I'll put my hands on her and I'll cast Gentle Repose. Mm -hmm. You cast... Can I just tell everyone that I was planning on killing her? And then taking her body and burning it into a pile of ashes, or before before I killed her, telling her, I'm going to turn you into ashes, and every 10 days, I'm going to cast gentle repose on your ashes so you can't even re-enter the ecosystem. Like, I was going to keep it separate from the earth, like the, oh, the closest thing to death I could think of, but now I'm just using it so that she can be at peace. Oh. Yeah, you see she's kind of like choking as she's about to die, and you give her a peaceful death and she just quietly goes as soon as Maribel passes you guys see the world around you begins to move in slow motion and all of the colors around you begin blending together but it's just black and white because everything around here is dead it almost looks like you guys are in an oil painting everything is black and white except for you guys and Moonshine, you hear a voice from behind you. You asked me to step it the fuck up, I believe? (laughs) Hey, Melora. You guys see an elvish-looking woman appear with very extreme features. Her ears are longer and pointier than a normal elf. She's taller. She looks like a distant relative of the elves, more like an ancient fae. She's dressed like a ranger with a giant sparkling green longbow. Her hair is blonde, and her eyes are the most piercing shade of green you've ever seen. And she looks at you guys and she goes, I usually don't meddle in the affairs of humans. People pray to gods to save them, but there is a natural order to things. What would happen to the lion if I were to answer the prayer of every antelope? Death is a part of life. It is natural, but what happened here in this forest is very unnatural, and I will help you heal the land. She looks to Beverly. First, fire to burn what has died and cannot be saved. I'm Alora. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kneel so deeply. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and I guess I look at my hands, uh, and where there was blood and filth, 
There is flame. Oh yeah, you have like full fucking flame powers right yeah. now. You are fucking Dragon Ball Z hell fire. Yeah. You have control of fire right now. Oh, do I float? Do I fly up? Oh hell yeah, dude. Okay. Uh, I cleanse the earth. You cleanse the earth. Beverly casts a wall of fire in all directions. You see all of these black and white blended images glow red and orange. Then she looks at you, hard one, and goes, Then, earth, to lay a new foundation. You see the fires die. Sick. <laughs> Hard ones looks not quite as cool. There's just like mud coming out of him as he powers up. Oh, I think uh, so. I raise my hands in big fists above my head, like I'm about to slam the earth, and then I like think better of it, and I just touch the ground gently. Ah. Beautiful. You touch the ground, and you see brown, healthy soil <sighs> comes out in all directions around you. She turns to Cobb and goes, "Air to spread the seeds." She throws up some like green sparkling magic seeds and you see old Cobb whips it around, flies all around the outside of the creek and you guys see these sparkly green seeds lay all through the soil. And then she turns to you, Moonshine, and she goes, and water to give it all life. I, uh, I squat and then... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Please don't piss in the soil. Yeah, no, I know it's a joke. A weird time to joke, but uh, we like to keep it light. And then I and then I just use my hands and like like fire hydrants in the summer. Yeah. Fire hydrants in the summer. Moonshine shoots water in all directions and you see green around you and suddenly this weird painting in between world that was just black and white is suddenly green and blue and yellow and it's got all the colors of like a beautiful spring day I turn to Balnor and Balnor tuna <laughs> to <laughs> and tuna to go back in the water I assume you're more of a vegetarian type I'm gonna put the tuna away <laughs> got a caprese if you want that So the landscape around you guys is now green and lush, but you're still in this weird in-between world. Uh, Suddenly, Luna pipes up nervously. Sorry, I know this isn't really the time, but can you can you cure my curse? And you see Melora walks over to her and smiles and brushes her finger across Luna's cheek. I guess she doesn't really have a cheek. Does he? Yeah. Does the dogs have cheeks? Yeah, I guess she has a On cheek. On their muzzle. <laughs> she brushes her muzzle and she goes, Your mother was a lycanthrope. You're not cursed. You were born like this. And the goddess turns to you, Moonshine, and she goes, When the time comes for you to rest, call out to me and I will take you to this forest and you can become one of the spirits that protects it. Until we meet again, Moonshine. Until we meet again. And you see she leans down and she picks up Maribel into her arms like she's a baby. And she walks off. Real real quick, Maribel wasn't my, mo- my mom, right? No, it doesn't matter. I don't want to know. I don't want to <laughs> know. Melora turns around. Would you like to know? No. She smiles and nods. Hey, can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Just whispered in my ear, Melora. <laughs> Melora. She keeps walking. I really like knowing whose parents people are. <laughs> As she's in the distance, I say, Say hi to Pelor for me. <laughs> she throws up the peace sign. Oh, she yeah. does it beautifully. So right. Oh, like two beautiful horns. That's my God it is. You guys snap out of the in-between world, and you're back where you were. Only the I'd... giant mushroom dome is gone. Moonshine, this looks like the living wood that you grew up near. Woo! The landscape Ladies is green. Ladies and gentlemen, the living could became the living wood. Woo! I turned to Bev, and I kind of gloat about the fact that I met my god. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool, that was... huh, young Bev? She's pretty great. Yeah. I feel like if I could have two gods... Definitely pick yours as my number two. I can, you know, I got a lot of dads. Why not a lot of gods? Yeah, you guys come back. The landscape is all green. The trees have all come back to life, and you can hear the babbling sounds of the crick. Oh. The crick is back, baby. Your guys' yeah, crick rot is gone. Roots. You guys feel feel healthy. You suddenly see movement in the trees 
as half of the forest of the living wood starts running towards you. Oh no! And you guys see, oh, gr- you guys see, Green Shade is like, dudes, you fucking did it! Oh you yeah! See all the ants are like, hey, yeah, you're yeah, going nuts. that's right. You fucking did it! You see all the ants run over. Like they the fucking beat's about to drop. They scoop you guys. <laughs> There's scoops all They're around. Scoops. They pick you guys up. The Ents start running with you guys, carrying you guys over their shoulders like you just won the goddamn Super Bowl. Uh, You run through the forest, now alive with plant and animal life. You see birds shooting down from the sky and flying alongside you as the tree ants run you back to the creek. This is the creek I was telling y'all about. This is even nicer than I thought. Yeah. I I like the old creek, too. I know. (laughs) Yeah, you see Luna, uh, like, looks around, and she goes, "Uh, fuck it. Uh, And you see she turns into a full wolf. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Be who you are, baby. Luna. Oh, Luna. Yeah, Luna. Did you meet that goddess, huh? Maybe Fiala ain't the only one. Moonshine, as you say that, Luna turns back into a werewolf, uh, and she kind of just looks off pensively and says, I've certainly got a lot to fucking think about. It doesn't matter. Uh, I get on a stag. <laughs> <laughs> Moonshine hops down from the tree and starts riding a stag bareback. <laughs> yeah, bareback. Woo! As you guys approach the crick, you see the entire community, all of these healthy crick elves, yes. rushing Woo! into the forest to try to find you guys. Oh, it's so many vicious Vs. <laughs> you see the Ents begin picking them up and tossing them up in the air like babies. <laughs> all these crick elves are surrounding you guys. The youngins run over to Beverly. Fire Daddy, you did it! Oh, you did it! My beautiful cricketeers, we done did it! The cricketeers, <laughs> oogly boogly, oogly boogly! They jump all over Beverly. <laughs> you forgot your crick ears! They start bending oh, your ears back oh. in the. You see, Mama runs out and hops into Hard One's arms. Oh, my, my leash. champion! <laughs> I I bow so deeply. <laughs> I fight for your honor. I fight for your crick, Mama, my queen. You bow to no possum, and she bows to you. Oh. I put my forehead against hers, and I huff some crick water. <laughs> uh, you see, amongst all of the cricks going crazy celebrating, uh, you also see the chosen guys. They're like the bad guys at the end of an 80s ski movie. <laughs> Further on, he's like, damn. <laughs> she just, like, throws a fist. Uh, and Mima rushes over to you, Moonshine. Mima, and she I, hugs you. I, I check her I check her for soft spots, making sure her crick rot's gone. I got no I got no soft spots, you Moonshine. You ain't hiding no scabs from me. I ain't hiding no scabs. Oh! Uh, I kind of made peace with Maribel on your behalf. Is she that... thought I was you, and I just told her I loved her, and she didn't mean to. She kind of got hoodwinked. We'll talk about it all over a hot, <laughs> a hot pot of hot gazpacho. It sounds like a good story. Let's, I love crick food. <laughs> Let's put some crawfish on the boil, y'all. Save the brown Ooh. for daddy. <laughs> Do I have enough fire left to fire up the grill? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> you, uh, uh, Beverly fires up the grill. Oh. There's a big celebration. <sighs> Plenty of brown to go around. Ooh, nice. And yeah. that's where we'll end our session. Ooh. Hell yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, we did it. I can't believe we did it. Can we say that this is the last thing that we're recording right before Jake goes to his wedding? <laughs> That's uh, true. Doesn't that feel and good to have honestly, be like this is the best night of my life. <laughs> I don't care what happens next week, man. <laughs> It really, I don't know if my wedding night will be able to top beating Maribel <laughs> and that story, man. Cut to them just playing this at your wedding. <laughs> this is our fir- our first dance is, uh, <laughs> is a flashback. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oof. Ooh. Bravo. Well yeah. done, Murph. Good we're, job, guys. Save guys... the accolades for the short rest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> true, true. Guys, head on over to the short rest, patreon.com slash nadpod. That's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. <gasps> don't sing yet. Uh, we'll be talking more about this on our after show short rest. Uh, guys, uh, please, it seems so trivial to plug things. I know, at the end right? Of... Let's just not plug it this time. <laughs> we just defeated no. Maribel. It's you know what Maribel would have wanted. Buy their book, watch Disney, follow us on Twitter. Yeah. You can Google all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Praise, but more praise the crick. Google Mushroom Queens. Uh, <laughs> 
hug your loved ones. Hug, yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe that's better. More importantly, hug your loved ones. Uh, tuck your kids in. Forgive those who have wronged you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Next time and, you're and and maybe question if that person that you're mad at was really just tricked by a traveling gnome. <laughs> he wasn't yeah. a gnome. Under, Il said, "Fucking devils." Wait, yeah, that's good. that's a, that's a really good one. Try to try to understand yeah. everybody's yeah. motivations and everyone's yeah. story. Try yeah. to avoid <laughs> breaking. So that we should end every episode. <laughs> <laughs> fucking life advice. That's what we're plugging this week is trying to understand <laughs> people who have wronged you. <laughs> try to avoid breaking down at a salad bar when you look at the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have trouble. <laughs> All right, guys. You know what? Let's let's go out on a solemn youth of the nation. Mm. Guys, tweet about the show using hashtag NADPOD. That's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. We are, we are the youth of the nation. We are, we are the youth of the nation. All right, everybody, it's the end of the show, and that means we need to shout out our benevolent Council of Elders. Benevolent be ye! Hoo-hoo, I'm here with Emily Ashford. You might have heard of her. No, I don't, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just being polite. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started with Matthew M., the Bullywug Prince. Actually, a human prince that was cursed by a witch's spell, but loved being a Bullywug so much, they just decided to run with it. Can I just say, I would love to be cursed by a witch. That's, like, better than a tattoo. It sounds awful. Joe N., the lover of Lucy turned fiancé of Lucy, uh-huh. currently debating whether to have a live bard or an enchanted disc jockey automaton at their wedding. Either way, it's gonna be lit. Brad D., the only pebble pot that isn't craven, spends most of their day removing spiders from the bathtubs of their various relatives. <laughs> J. Loma 72, a.k.a. Steelbreaker, hard one's gym spiration. Through sheer force of will, they invented a third leg muscle known as qualfs. Sounds like it hurts. Andrew A., a.k.a. Feldspar Lygarden, the half-elf. During the giant wars, they captured a giant and made it fight against its comrades by controlling it Ratatouille style. They later became Dang. friends and opened the world's largest restaurant. No mercy, but tons of linguine. Taylor Papa, the sixth, a legendary bard to whom no item isn't an instrument, taught Schubert and other mushrooms how to play each other like bombs goes, which drives the Dwargers crazy. And they were already crazy. Yeah. Dylan B., a super weak wizard who wields 12 swords, which isn't a very useful skill for a warrior, but if you ever need help getting grocery bags from your car, give Dylan a call. <laughs> Simon W., the bootleg of hard one Soft Loss. Simon has a pet Tamagotchi named Software Loss and is straight up enemies with Old Cobb. Hoo-hoo. It's hard to make Old Cobb not like you. Yeah, really. Danny P., Bohemia's resident artist, painted Hard One Senior Portrait at the Dwarfenage. They're currently really into abstract art and have done several paintings in the gelatinous cubism style. Tom P., Father of the Realm, Serenader of Sleeping Babies. His rendition of Pat the Bunny can instantly restore all your spell slots. Oh my goodness, Tom P., come sing for Moonshine, please. <laughs> Spencer Caspru, patron elder of libations, ale maker to gods and heroes of Bohemia alike, once made an IPA so bitter it made even Ulfgar grimace and order a red Gatorade to chase it with. Wow, I mean, the talent. Pedro E., bard of the mountains, runs a whimsical theme park called Pedro Land that is populated entirely by log rides. Love a good log ride. Don the Lemon Dwarf, despite their name, Don has never eaten or even seen a lemon. They think lemons are an incredibly rare golden gemstone and no one's had the heart to correct them. Honestly, I would wear I would wear a necklace with a lemon on it. Griffin SD, aka the Stranger, the Silver Dragonborn Eldritch Knight and owner of the Badger's Pint Inn and Tavern. The pillow mints at Griffin's Inn can cure Crick Rot instantly. Could have told us that a while wow. ago. Beard, could have saved us. Beard Man Dan taught Hard One how to braid and maintain his beard. Before Beard Man Dan came along, Hard One's beard looked like absolute shit. But after studying Dan's ways, Hard One was finally able to score a date with Gemma. You know, as women, we don't think about the grooming that goes into a beard. Scott D., the hiccup wizard, is super weak and knows zero spells, but can cure your hiccups just by lightly booping your nose. Cute. Winner of Bohemia 
Australia's Best Person Award for 15 years in a row. Oh, boy. Aaron C., a half-orc bard who's the front man of Bohemia's first screamo band. Oh, the passion, the emotion. Hermes W., the Bat King. The Boy King lit the bat signal for Hermes the night that Theala came for him, but the Bat King was like, uh, meh. Good survival instincts. T. Alex once put a blunderbuss inside a blunderbuss, and it worked about as well as you'd expect. <laughs> Harley S., the gnome killer, travels Bohemia hunting the evil scourge of gnomes, plaguing its city, has killed more gnomes than any man, and is a fucking hero for it. Thank Ar- you, Harley S. Arguable. Parker E. <laughs> Has the cutest little face, but his dex is also so high that he's impossible to scoop no matter how badly you oh, want to. The unscoopable. That sounds like a M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> uh, Kyle McHugh, owner and operator of Bohemia's own McQuanalds franchise. Every boy's McQuanalds Happy Meal comes with a sword, and every girl's McQuanalds Happy Meal also comes with a fucking sword, bitches. That's woke. RJW, the werewolf who accidentally bit Luna and gave her lycanthropy during a heavy makeout session but he apologized and she was like fuck it this is pretty badass and then she chest bumped him and then he went to kiss her but she headbutted him and that was honestly hotter <laughs> and spartus the oldest crick elf despite his age he has a vicious w that's a v on the front and the back nice adam r wields a two-handed axe one-handed and what it all comes down to is that adam r's got it figured out just fine because he's got one hand on his great axe and his other one's playing the piano brent b taught alanis magic not wizard magic though the magic of cinema they watched garden state together once and now alanis loves the shins that band's good. Cassandra MHP opened a rival Zumba class right next to Shay's place, and she's stealing a lot of Shay's yogis. Whoa. <gasps> um, Matsy, a.k.a. Matty Big Crits, Matthias of House Crit, once killed a guy during a game of rock, paper, scissors. Matty can't help but crit on a foe, no matter how casual. Danielle D. Danielle the dastardly dame, so dastardly that she once stole all of Nana Kindleaf's worthers, resulting in no young children paying attention to Nana Kindleaf until she restocked. Oh, brutal, Nana. She's more than just a Werther's <laughs> vending machine. Hugh C., a.k.a. Haldor Frostbach, MVP of the Giant Wars, crewed on the SS Stormborn and fought alongside Elias and Red, a barbarian warrior from the frigid north. Always shirtless, once tried to put a shirt on, but his muscles pulsed until it popped. His pecs will not hide. Manny the Mundane, accidental deity who got in the way of a lich's spell to reach divinity. When you think your phone's dead, but then you realize you just locked it, that's Manny smiling upon you. And what a beaming smile it is. Daniel Yu, a.k.a. Multifor, the owner of a sweet boat that sounds like Gilbert Gottfried. Also, he kind of sounds like Gilbert Gottfried. Okay, straight up, he's been lying about the boats. Just a hidden PA system, which honestly, he overpaid for. That's just a really expensive goof. Jordan DJ, legendary DJ of the realm. They're be- are so fresh and magical that you never get tired dancing to them. Jeffrey S., Lord of the Fjord, born of the sword, allergic to corn, an Achilles-level warrior whose secret weakness is a vegetable. I don't like vegetables either. Xavier C., a nice gnome, a non-trickster, just gets up, goes to work in the morning, and goes home to their family. Yeah, right, he's a halfling in disguise. (laughs) Cutter W., a high elf dandy turned crick stumpitect, though recently changed their title to Barkitect. New business cards have been ordered, but the new titles is still agonizingly slow to catch on. Lex S., a maven at being craven, has the dubious honor of being better at hiding than Scoutmaster Denny. John S., a.k.a. Schubert the Mushroom, with the mithril dragon Dwarger King Gon, Schubert has established himself as King of Cragwater and is working to rehabilitate the Dwargers of their mithril lust. We wish you luck, Schubert. James B., the James Bond of Bohemia, orders his martinis at the Blue Mana Inn shaken, not stirred, and also enchanted with magic buffs, because why the hell not? He lives in a magic world. Ryan M., a lawful good rogue, walks around obeying laws and being a solid dude, but could be awesome at stealing stuff if they wanted to. Elena C., a real tough son of a gun, had crick rot before anyone else, but just assumed it was a cold and didn't tell anyone. (gasps) So brave, so brave. I just don't take medicine. Andrew M., the only crick elf who's never been tricked by a traveling gnome, mostly because he doesn't trust people, but he's working on opening up. 
Good luck, Andrew. Then we've got Ricky, a.k.a. Tricky Ricky of the Cricky, once rode one of those electric rideshare scooters all the way from the Crick to Iron Deep, where they are outlawed. He's currently being held in a dwarven prison. <laughs> <gasps> but I bet it was fun. Andrew R. sings songs to the dwarfins at the Dwarfenage. They're all emotionless dwarven songs about working hard in the mines, but still, it's the thought that counts. Cannibalistic Cthulhu, Old Cobb's therapist, who he will undoubtedly need to turn to after this whole Maribel debacle. I am worried about Old Cobb after this episode. Michael McD, head mixologist at the Blue Mana Inn. I know you think you can't freeze alcohol, but Michael McD enchanted an ice cube tray so that he could freeze whiskey and make whiskey ice cubes to go in your whiskey. Whew, whiskey on whiskey. Blitzbrig Dimitri, famous Dwarger who owns and runs the beloved franchise Dwarger's Big Burger. The Dwargers who work there are completely mad, so most of the burgers are rat meat, <laughs> but you can't argue with the results. <laughs> I mean, who knew rats would be so tasty? <laughs> Victor T., Balnor's boy, whose loving dad was ripped from his family and transported to another world. Victor trained for years under his father and has never once lost a bag. Henry A. walked into the cave right after Maribel was corrupted and joked, Do not go in there. <laughs> a master of keeping it light. <laughs> Uh, Penfield, the most educated Crick Elf, has only slightly worse reading comprehension than Papa. And Papa can read Mo, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Colin G. chooses to live in the outer rim of Esri just because he's such a salt-of-the-earth guy, a working-class hero. Uh, that's where I'd live. That's where all the arcane and fight clubs are. Austin L. knows where Alanis is. Now, if only the party could find Austin L., so lost. Lance W., a master of all weapons except the lance, leads to a lot of misunderstandings and teasings amongst the other weapons <laughs> masters. Justin I. also signed his name in the cursed book by accident. He was signing autographs because he's a very famous gnome bard, and Ilsa just kind of slipped the book in there amongst a bunch of 8 by 10s and he's now he's, he's an evil devil bard. It's very metal. Eli A. works on the air cruise ship that Pelor flies on in heaven, an archangel that can make a mean margarita. Oh, I'd try it. Caleb, a werewolf that is totally comfortable in their own skin, got bit and was just like, this is cool, this is who I am. Shout out to you, Caleb. Clayton M. has done as much arcane as hard one, but isn't quite as lucky, had a wild magic surge and exploded just the other day. Oh. R.I.P. Clayton M. Oh, hope he left some cool jagged clothing, though. TJ M, old Cobb's second best friend next to Hard One, loves huffing creek water and keeping it light when not brooding or crying about exes. The professional, a rival possum lawyer that is frequently going to court against Pawpaw, wears an 80s businesswoman blazer and scrambles to the stand. Jacob C, a truly empathetic green teen scoutmaster who once let Denny beat him in a sparring match, immediately regretted it upon learning what a craven bastard Denny is and kicked his ass next time. You got to. Elena M. killed a giant and stole his axe. It's super hard to wield, and they mostly just drag it around, but by God, it looks cool as hell. Gone off has gone off the deep end. A wizard so powerful they can cast a spell to erase their own memory so they wouldn't have to deal with the stresses of their wizard life and is currently living as a humble crick elf. Cameron C., hard to storm crow's original best bud, used to feed him bread down by the crick. Careful though, Cameron, bread isn't good for birds. No, it's not. Expands in their stomach. <laughs> and finally, Mick Pucks, the codemaster who is tirelessly working to build our website. Mick Pucks did hack the mainframe to mess with Maribel's fungal network, which is why she rolled that one. We appreciate you, Mick Pucks. And we appreciate all of our listeners so much and Patreon subscribers, guys. Head on Appreciation over. Appreciation pooling at my feet. Yes, head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash nadpod to listen to the short rest and check out next week's episode. Thank you guys so much. Bye, sweeties. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>